Sports card hobby family, the dumb money continues to flow, and we are going to take a look at a couple of sales that just boggle the mind. Stick around. What's going on? Another day, another sports card video. Today we've got a fun topic, just going to dance around some funny sales that have gone on here recently and talk through it like you all, like we always do. Thanks to today's video sponsor, Pristine Auction, where they've got a ton of collector style items and price points all over the place, all sorts of different cool stuff on Pristine Auction. They've got daily auctions, weekly auctions, 10-minute auctions, which are pretty fun and cool. Make sure to check those out. $10 off your first auction victory with the link down below. Definitely check out Pristine Auction. All right, we're going to start off the video with a non-sports card. Many saw this sale, and it is mind-boggling. It is a one-of-one -one Mickey Mouse card from 2023. So made in the last year or so, sold through Alt private sale for half a million dollars. Now, at first I was thinking, like, did they confirm the sale? Did the person actually pay for it? From what I've seen, I don't, you know, I haven't seen actual proof and all that stuff, but from what I've seen from a few different sources that it's been confirmed that it's paid for and that the collector slash buyer slash speculator slash investor, whatever, wants to collect all the, the one of ones, the Disney one of ones or something like that. How did they come to that price? If a private sale, half a million dollars. Like, I got to believe that that could have been negotiated down a little bit. But maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe I don't understand how Disney one-of-ones work. I, maybe I, I'm completely wrong on how this entire market is moving. Maybe this is the new normal. I mean, if you would have told somebody five years ago, ten years ago, that a, an ultra-modern sports card would sell for half a million dollars, people would think that you're absolutely nuts. That's for a sports card. This is a non-sports card of a fairly new set. I think it's out of that, what, Cacao 100, Disney 100. And of course, my first question is, what does it mean for my 1931 Walt Disney rookie card? Probably nothing. It probably means nothing. But this is the kind of thing that is just so funny. For half a million dollars, you could basically buy like the entire graded supply of this of this card, the Walt Disney rookie card from 1931, the pre-war Disney card, the OG. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of non-sports collectors and stuff that are that know these cards better than me that are going to say there's probably earlier cards for Mickey Mouse than this card, but this is considered to be the Walt Disney rookie card. It, it gets hairy when you get into non-sports rookie cards, but this is an all-time classic card. And so when you see a one-of-one one that was literally just manufactured, manufactured scarcity a year ago, which is which is the norm now. Look, this is what it is, but people are paying up. They're paying huge money for this. And I see this sale as celebrated. I've got such weird mixed feelings on this. On the one hand, I think it's cool that, wow, somebody is willing to pay crazy money for a non-sports card. I think that that's cool. But it's the it's what it is though the thing that that bothers me you know where it's like man they could crank out these one of ones every week if they wanted to you know what's stopping them from doing so and what's that going to mean if they do decide to do that for uh, Walt Disney cards or whatever moving forward what does that do maybe this is the original one of one Mickey Mouse I don't know and I guess this is what makes collectible so fascinating is it's all and you know beauty is in the eye of the beholder when it comes to any of this stuff you know a vintage card is to one person is amazing oh my gosh look at the history of the card it's so beautiful for others it's trash you know it's not shiny enough and then for the vintage collector they look at the shiny stuff and they're like oh my god who cares okay great it's shiny you know and then there's people that click both of course but my point is is that in collectibles beauty is in the eye of the beholder just on the non-sports side I have a couple of pretty big non-sports cards that I've purchased here over the last, what, six months or so. The Art to Bart Simpsons card, and then we've got the 2008 Rittenhouse Robert Downey Jr. Auto. for This is the original kind of Iron Man card, this being the big chase card out of that particular set. And of course, Robert Downey Jr. was the one that really kicked off the Marvel Universe with him playing Iron Man. It caught fire. And then, what, 15 years later, it's just gone bananas. I believe Marvel, actually, I'm pretty certain Marvel movies have grossed more money than any series ever in the history of cinema. And a lot of that is thanks to Robert Downey Jr. 
just kicking it off and having great actors come in and do good work for these Marvel movies. Now, of course, he's coming back as Doctor Doom to kind of save the franchise a little bit. Marvel's been on a little bit of a dip with some weird shows and some, you know, eh, like some movies that just haven't been very good. Well, the OG gang is back, the Wolverine versus Deadpool crew, and then you've got Robert Downey Jr. They're bringing back the big guns to get make Marvel great again. So my point is there with those purchases, when I looked at that, I was thinking like, historically, what matters? You know, what matters with these cards? How did these cards kind of over time become important. And I think that's really the big thing. That's what I would call organic collectability, where it wasn't necessarily the hot thing or the most well-known thing when it first came out, but over time, that TV show took off. Over time, the, that movie series took off and made that card even more and more so relevant. You know, look, this card came out in 1931 when, was Disney really all that relevant when this came out, this tobacco card? You know, was it was he all that relevant? Not in 1931, but now look at where it's gone. Now look at where we are today. And you look back at a card like that and really appreciate the history of it. It's no different with you know, vintage baseball cards and pre-war baseball. A lot of these guys that collect these you know, pre-war baseball cards, the biggest reason, of course, is you know the history of Ty Cobb and what he went through, what kind of life he had, and then the, the impact he had on the game of baseball. And then it brings you all the way to today where we've got Aaron Judge and Shohei Otani in the World Series. It's the historical element, what came before and the impact it had on everything moving forward. So it's kind of that big bang effect of some of these original cards, original characters, original players that have become organically collectible over time. And really, to me, this has always been the big driver of value in collectibles. But this has changed. This has changed over the last five years. And that's why I titled this up, The Dumb Money. People might say, oh, man, that's mean to say. And I don't mean it. Look, maybe that half a million dollar one of one Mickey Mouse, maybe in 10 years, that's a million dollar card. Maybe the thing just keeps on going. Maybe this is just a new way, a new thing in collectibles that is now a thing. But if we look at historically how this thing has gone, it, it hasn't gone well, typically, for new release type cards that have been created as a collectible. It's been created to be the big chase collectible. It hasn't been something that people have grown interest over time. It hasn't been an organic rise. It's bang, we made this thing and here it is. The one card that, that I actually give credence to that I think is a really cool one that they made here recently that Post Malone paid a couple of million bucks for is the Lord of the Rings one of one card that came out. TC, I think that's technically a TCG card, Magic the Gathering card, Lord of the Rings set, but in part because of what that card represents. So it's like the one ring of power in the movie and in the books. That actually, it's like one ring to rule them all. So you have a one of one card for that thing. It kind of goes, like the, the, the vibe goes together there. The one of one ring, one of one card, okay. But Mickey Mouse, it's not, you know, I mean, like, th this could be any character now. They could, honestly, they could come out with Simpsons cards and they could go, bang, we got a one of one Bart Simpson card. And I bet it would sell. I bet it would sell really well because it's a chase card. And it's because, oh my God, it's a one of one. There's such a huge, it, it's very interesting to me, the obsession with one of ones. And on the sports card side, They've gone absolutely nuts with it. You look at a player that comes out today, how many one-of-ones is Wembenyama going to have when it's all said and done? A lot. You know, going back with, with football, I remember there was some crazy number for, for Trevor Lawrence. That was in 2021. He's got a ton of one-of-ones, let alone all these new guys, you know, the Caleb Williams and all the new guys that are coming out. One-of-one one used to be special, but now you've got a bunch of one-of-ones in different products. It, it's just, it's saturated. It's very oversaturated, the one-of-ones. But we'll go to a sports card now. One that absolutely makes no sense to me, I talked about it in another video, was the LeBron Curry Durant one of one. It's a really basic Olympic card one of one that sold at Golden Auction for 50 grand. 50 grand. And I think a lot of it too is just the opportunity cost when you look at this. What could you buy with half a million? What could you buy with 50 grand instead of this thing? And I mean, if you look at traditional investments, my God, you go into you know the stock market, there's all sorts of stocks you could pick out of there for half a million that probably would make a lot more sense than, than a collectible like this. But again, maybe that somebody already has a $10 million stock portfolio. They don't care. And they're like, you know what? I don't care. This is how I'm hobbying. I've got the big, I've got the deep pockets and this is how I want a hobby and I'm going to collect all those Disney one of ones. I got Mickey Mouse, the big one. I'm going after, you know, Donald Duck and all the other, all the other characters. 
Maybe that is what it is. And it's like, hey, look, that is that one rich person's collection. Like, hey, you know what? Trading cards are pretty cool. I'm not really into most of it or whatever, but this is where I'm picking my spot and I'm going in heavy. Maybe that is the answer to all of this. For someone like me and for like a lot of you that watch that kind of have paid attention to this over time, this new phenomenon is wild to watch. Is it sustainable? It has been over the last few years, or are we going to look back on this and, and just kind of look at look back at the one of one craze where people paid crazy money? When you talk about dumb money, you know, people paid a lot of money for cards in 2021, and now you look back and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe they paid that much for this. And a guy literally, guy gal, just dropped half a million dollars on a one of one Mickey Mouse card. A half a mil. I mean, it's still happening. People are still spending huge, huge money on these types of things. And again, I have to assume that it just goes back to somebody that they probably have huge, huge money in traditional investments, and this is just their fun little side gig that they're doing. I don't think they, they took out second mortgage to go and, and, and nail down the, the Mickey Mouse one of one, at least I hope not, Super Fractor. The Super Fractor, the one of one Super Fractor. My God, make, any, make those one of one Super Fractors and people come a running for these suckers. It's, it's really a, a phenomenon to watch. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, my friends. Smart money, dumb money, or is it just none of our business? That's probably the answer. Hey, when people buy a $2 million Lamborghini, why are, why do people care? If, you know, why, oh my God, I can't believe you spent $2 million on a, two, on a Lamborghini. Well, he probably has $500 million. So that's probably the reason why it happened. But it's just a new phenomenon in our little trading card space. All right, friends, stay healthy, stay awesome. And I will talk to you again later.